Hello, I'm Brent Ferris from the Bearded Man Studios, and I'm uh, back with a tutorial on uh, while I'm answering uh, kind of a question that I got on the HTML5 framework about, or game framework, about uh, vector twos and why I chose to use them and what are they good for, and uh, you know, because I kind of just explained just code throughout the whole vector two, and I didn't uh, do what I usually do about explaining what it's good for. So, Without further ado, I'll kind of go into why I chose vector twos and what they're good for. So, uh, in in uh, in kind of quick summary, uh, the three main things that vector twos are actually really good for is position, direction, and velocity. So, a position is an x and a y. It's a location on the screen. If I had a screen, of, well, I do have a screen. If I had a screen of uh, thousands and thousands of pixels, how would I dif uh, differentiate actual positions on the screen? Uh, I don't know what this would be. Let's just put 50 and uh, 100. So <coughs> these are actual points on the screen which can be enemies or friendlies or if you're doing even an HTML5 application it could be just uh, some kind of animation where that's at, uh, one of your elements are. So position is actually uh, just a location on the screen which is great to have it inside of objects if you know object oriented programming you know that managing an x and a y for every object would be uh, terrible so by wrapping them up into a position or a vector 2 we're able to cover position direction velocity all those things with only one kind of class which would be the vector 2 so that is an explanation on position now what are these other two things that are uh, fairly important. Well, let's start off with velocity. Let's say I have a velocity of 5 and 10. So every update that I go through on uh, <coughs> in my loop, my object is going to move over 5 and up 10. That looks more like 5 and 5. Let's just say over 5 and up 10. <coughs> Pardon me. Okay, so it goes over 5 and up 10, and then the next update it goes over 5 and up 10. So uh, that's basically an x and a y, which we can use with a vector 2, which solves our problem of velocity. We can have a, um, inside of a class, let's say I have a player a class, and inside of that class I have a position, I have a velocity, and uh, let's just have a position velocity. Well now we can have these as vector twos which include an x and a y. So now I can keep my position and velocity and various other things that need an x and a y on screen spaces it, lots of things have x and y's uh, or destination could even be an x and a y so I could have a destination uh, which brings us back to position, obviously, uh, because it's a position on the screen. But we can put that into a, a, a vector two and keep it stored where it's kind of isolated, and we don't have to manage, uh, you know, position x and position y and velocity x and velocity y and destination x and destination y. We don't have to manage all of those inside of our uh, class and get it all jumbled up with all kinds of variables. Um, so that is velocity. So I'm just going to put, uh, let's say, speed x, speed x, and speed y. So that brings us to direction. If you remember, I did a little bit of uh, harping on the normalize function for our framework. And normalize basically. Uh, when we get out a number, it's going to be somewhere between one and, or negative one and one. Uh, zero is inclusive. So, a direction is exactly what it says. It's a direction. Say we're facing a direction, or we're looking a direction, or we're moving a direction. Uh, if I am moving, let's say my x is uh, 0 0.1 and my y is 0 0.9, I am moving somewhat like this. I'm not moving straight up, but I'm moving, uh, sorry, in screen space that is that is actually more like this because uh, positive y is down. So I'm moving slightly on the x and a large amount on the y. Let me leave that line. So uh, 
when we normalize, we get out a number between negative 1 and 1 uh, that then we can apply uh, a single float to. Let's say that uh, we have our numbers negative, let's keep those numbers, 0 0.1 on the x and 0 0.9 on the y. What we could do is multiply these by a float, let's say 5. Now we come up with, uh, well, let's just, we come up with a larger number on the x, but an even larger number on the y. Uh, they're both multiplied by 5. So, we'll be moving just at, uh, in the same exact direction as we were before, but instead of moving 0 0.1 on the x and 0 0.9 on the y, we're now moving 0. Uh, well, whatever it is, I, I don't want to do math here, uh, on the x, and nearly 5 on the y. No, sorry, nearly 5 on the y. So, uh, that is how uh, we can keep a direction and increase the speed with a normalized vector. So, let's just say uh, negative 1, and then let's put a little arrow to 1 on x or y. So that is basically the importance of a direct, uh, vector, what they can do, and they can do a lot more stuff than just these three things as well. As I, as I showed you, um, they can use these three factors in other things such as destinations or what have you. So uh, I hope this kind of, oh, I should probably leave it on the screen, I hope this helped out in explaining why I chose to use vector threes and uh, kind of how cool they are and what they can be used to do. So. Uh, with that, I bid you good day.